Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Multiboxing with Mirai. This is the last in between Iceboxer setup video that we're going to do for the remainder of the Wrath of the Lich King series here, portion of this series. I have been uh, neglecting to show the list, but I have been, um, if it will focus, I have been marking things off, as you can see. Don't look at the Oculus. <laughs> but we do have the final three heroic ICC five bands remaining. This is where Jaina and I, we join forces and we go up along a secret entrance on the side. Wait, no, 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 no. I'm not, um, no, I'm not going to tell my plan. I see this in all the movies. The villains, they, they tell their plan to the good guys and then all of a sudden things get foiled. Well, I'm the good guys. And I'm not going to tell my plan to the public just yet. You're just going to have to tune into the final three episodes of Multiboxing with Mirai to see what happens. Anyway, anyway, uh, I'm going to keep this one short. Hopefully not a lot to show. Um, first, what I did want to show, though, is I, in the beginning of the Gundrak episode, I talked about how I was in a uh, multiboxing guild back in Wrath. Lots of fun times. Lots of fun times. And I, uh, I was kind of forgetting some of the people's names. And um, if they're mad, I don't know if they're mad. I haven't gotten any hate mail yet. But um, I dug up some old screenshots. Some old screenshots from an old UI with a terrible, terrible font attached to it. <laughs> so don't laugh, but um, I dug up some old screenshots that showed the uh, guild roster at different times um, on who was online. So when I said I was in an awesome multi-boxing guild back in the day, I wasn't kidding. But um, here's the first screenshot. So this was during an AV weekend. Obviously, obviously Blizzard has removed follow from Battlegrounds. So uh, there will be no more AV weekends like this anymore. But uh, there's Gerb, there's David Duran, Kickstum, I forgot to mention, Ice Orbs, uh, Raffle Stomps, I forgot to mention, Fishbeak, Kenshin, um... So that was just that was just one um, screenshot. Here's another. Here's another screenshot. There's me at the top, Fenril, and uh, I'm, as I labeled the image, not invited. I was not invited to Nax. Uh, McRathy is Dan. Um, McRathy was uh, he was known for organizing like older, non-current instance runs, and um, I'm sure he put this one together as well. And uh, they were doing Naxorama, so that was a lot of fun. You know, I don't know, maybe maybe McGrathy doesn't like me. I don't know, you know. I didn't I didn't get the invite. No, I probably didn't get the invite. I probably just ignored it. And uh and here's uh, another one with a lot of PvE going on. A lot of PvE. And this one also has um Zod. I, I mentioned Zod from in Gundrak. Zod was there, Fanes, Alemi, not a lot of uh, familiar names, Redbeard. He still plays, but he plays um, Eve these days. And um, yeah, so this was the roster back in the day, man. Good times, good times. And this one right here, this was, uh, obviously they were in Nax, but ICC was um, what was current. And Mercurio on the Dual Dash Boxing Forums, who I think has changed his name, can't be 100% sure on that. But he had already downed Marogar um, in ICC while 10 boxing himself. So, quite the feat there. That was a lot of fun. Those days were a lot of fun. That's why Wrath, that's why I'm having so much fun doing these Wrath instances. When I do the Cataclysm stuff, I'm going to have no attachment to those instances. It's going to be me just talking about bullshit. But uh, anyway, I figured I would touch on. Um, I need some water. I figured I would touch on how my vehicle combat is set up because in Gundrak it failed me. It failed me. Well, it was set up correctly, but my domino setup failed me. Um, I've since changed the domino setup. If you noticed in the Trial of Champion, uh, Trial of the Champion instance, uh, everything worked great there. Everything went swimmingly smooth in that instance. And, um, so what happens here, I have explained that I've got this toggle here, right? So it's red and green, on and off, that's for my key maps. I've explained this before. 
this is not new information unless you didn't watch prior episodes. Um, but I've since included holding down shift and left clicking turns on vehicle combat. So the way I've got that set up, right? So let's look at my menus. The first half of this is just a menu setup. You know, a lot of people, I would imagine most people don't have a setup like I do. So the menu stuff really isn't all that important to uh, people. But if you were looking at this, um, this is kind of how it's done. This isn't a complete walkthrough. I'm just going to show you how I've got things set up. So zero one green key maps enabled <clears throat> is my standard green digit in the upper left on this game client. So it's attached to a button set called zero when green key maps enabled. Very simple and straightforward. And uh, we come down to that and it's attached. It's one button does another key map, another mapped key in uh, menu button. So let's look at green. It's called green key maps enabled. So let's come down to that. I'm very good at naming things. So let's come into here. Green key maps enabled. Whoops. Expand that, expand that. And you can see here that, um, again, apologies for the in and out light. I just cannot seem to align the weather forecast to have a nice sunny day outside when I have to rely on outside light to, uh, do this for me. But anyway, this, uh, this mapped key, when I'm holding down no modifiers, when no modifiers are pressed and I left click, that's when it toggles off my key maps. So that's when you see the green and the red toggle back and forth. So when I hold down shift, it is going to do this mapped key here, vehicle combat enable. And it does something else too that we're going to talk about as well. So in toggles and swap, it does vehicle combat enable which is right here. Sorry that this is, it's because I'm trying to avoid the camera. So vehicle combat enable comes here and it turns on the main vehicle combat key map, which is right here. You guys following me? Don't get lost. Don't get lost on me now. It, uh, it does the digits blue, which obviously turns the digits blue. It loads the blue set of numbers and it loads the word, the words vehicle combat up here. It turns off my combat key map, which is crucial in this. And I'll mention, I'll come back to this in a second. And it clears all my click bars. And what that does is, um, so I've got a healing setup here, obviously. You've, you guys have seen, if you've watched some of the prior episodes, the recent prior episodes, I had white boxes around my unit frames. Here they are, they're still here, but they're, the borders are, of them are invisible. And so when I enable vehicle combat, it clears them. <clears throat> Sorry, I got some stuff stuck in my throat in this, but uh, I do that because, and I touched on this before, when you enter your vehicle, you no longer, I'm not gonna need healing. I'm not gonna need that healing setup to be there anymore at the moment. My priest is gonna be in a tank or in a plane or on mounted on uh, a beast of some sort. <laughs> an animal of some sort. So she's not going to be a priest anymore, you know? Um, and that's where, that's where this comes in further. So I turn off the combat key map because if you look at the combat key map and if you use the pro system yourself and you're familiar with how this works, you know that the combat, this is technically supposed to be named combat hotkeys because it's where you store the hotkeys that you're going to be pressing for all your DPS rotations, for all your stuns, for all your interrupts, for all, for all your other stuff. So I've got a list of things here. Some of them are, most of them aren't even bound to something. And uh, some of them are though. So two and three are typically used when you're in a vehicle. One, two, three, and four, sometimes five. And like I said before, I don't think I've seen a, com uh, a vehicle with more than four or five abilities on it. So two and three are automatically going to conflict when I'm in a vehicle of any sort. And obviously my DPS rotations are trying to, like the warrior's trying to do warrior stuff and the mage is trying to cast mage spells. But in a, in a vehicle, in a, in a tank, those don't work, right? I can't charge, I can't do heroic strike, I can't cast arcane blast in a tank. It just doesn't make any sense. So you have to remove this from the mix. So how do you do that? Well, I shut off combat. I shut it off completely, which just removes all of this from the mix. And I turn on vehicle combat, which... Forget the Oculus stuff. That was, I should just delete those right now. But um, you can see that I'm set up one through five to be broadcast 
to all of my clients. Now it does say two, three, four, five, and then it would say six here. And that's because I don't use WASD. I use ESDF and it's more comfortable for me to press two through five than it is one through four. Like in Trial of the Champion, I had four skills. Typically they're bound to one through four, but I was pressing two through five because I remapped it. So all of this together is just, it's just a very intricate way to remap everything, to remap my tip, my, my normal combat rotations, my DPS rotations into being just a straight broadcast one through four. So that all my characters can do the same thing. That's it. And if you're not using menus like I am, you can literally just come in here, cut all the menu crap out of the mix, come in here and set a hotkey at this point in time. The only reason I don't have a hotkey set here is because this is automatically executed by me shift clicking on this menu button. That's it. And that's it. So that's, um, so that's vehicle combat. Hope, hopefully everybody followed that one all the way through. We do have another setup here and uh, make sure everybody's not going to go AFK on me. We have a new one called combat toggle. So you notice before on the, where is it here? If I hold down alt and click that button, it's going to turn on combat toggle. And there's these new menus just to the right of um, the unit frames that I set up. And uh, let me show what this does. So let me spread everyone out here. Okay. And let me just go in to a normal fight. So I'll assist and I'll start DPSing. And actually what I want to do is I want to, um, I want to move this character over. I want to split up my melee DPS because they kind of stand on top of each other. And it's hard to see what's going on. So come back to my paladin and we're DPSing. This is just a, you know, normal DPS. The mage is casting her spells. The, the priest is going to cast something every 10 seconds or so, something like that. And of course my melee characters are going through the rotations that I've told them to go through macros or just pressing buttons on the uh, hot, on the action bar. So, so what do these buttons do? Well, they're going to toggle combat on the characters that they're next to. So you notice that the mage is casting her spells. She's casting her spells. You can hear me hitting the button on the keyboard. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the mage out of the mix. I'm still hitting the button and she's not casting her spells anymore. I've taken her, I've removed her out of combat, out of the combat DPS rotations, just like that. Now, if we watch, let me zoom in here a little bit more. If we watch the, the, uh, the shaman here, she does that lightning thing. Her, uh, her spells are pretty visual here. So I'm going to take her out of the mix as well. And she's just going to go back to auto attacking. That's all she's doing. She's just auto attacking. She's still swinging her weapon, but she's auto attacking. That's it. That's it. So she's out of the mix as well. If I take the, if I take the paladin out of the mix, well, he's my main guy. He's not doing anything. He's just auto attacking like the other guys, like the other characters. So, so let's bring the mage back into the mix. Bam, she starts casting again. Let's bring the shaman back into the mix. Bam, there's a flame shock, there's a lava lash, and there's a storm strike. And then we'll bring the paladin back into the mix. And the first thing he's going to do is an Avenger's shield. So, boom, just like that. So it's very cool. I think that's very cool. It took me an entire day to set this up. And um, I'm, very, I'm very proud of this as well. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, it is hard coded to these specific characters at the moment. So I always praise the pro system for being so flexible that I can just uh, move characters in and out of my party at will, and they're going to continue to do what they're supposed to do. Um, unfortunately, these buttons right here, they have to be hard coded. At least I don't see another way around it at the moment. But um, I'm always bothering lax about uh, putting new things into is boxer so this this the, one of the things that i always yelled at him about always yelled at him about was the uh, i wanted i wanted to be able to do to make these changes to these menu buttons on the fly without um without um i guess you weren't able to do it before until i was uh so i was very adamant about wanting to conditionally uh select and change um these menu buttons so 
That's one of the things I yelled at him about, which I got included. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't very eager to do it, but I, you know, just a few, just a few life threats. It's an amazing what, and it's amazing what you can do with blackmail. So <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so that's combat toggle. And you're like, well, dude, that's kind of cool, but where is that going to come in handy? And actually in the second ICC five man pit of Sauron, the final boss throws this debuff on a random character in the party. Uh, never the tank, as far as I know, but a random DPS uh, character. And that debuff then makes all that it makes that character DPS. All their D, all their damage goes straight to whoever the boss is focused on, which is usually the tank. So the DPS character is now helping the boss DPS down the tank. And because my characters do uh, a lot of damage, the tank dies very, very, very quickly. So what happens then is that once I notice who has the debuff, I can remove them from combat. So they won't do that damage to the tank anymore. And I can continue to DPS because there's only about a second or a second and a half window when that debuff drops off to when he casts it again. So you can either stand around and wait for the debuff to come off, which takes forever, which is how I used to do it, which is boring as hell, and just hope that you make it through the fight or you can start removing characters from combat, which is what I do now. So that's very cool. I guess to just show how that's set up real fast, uh, again, it's kind of confusing. So when I hold down Alt and I click on the green button, it's going to, it's going to execute combat toggle enable. So where is that here? Where it toggles and swaps, combat toggle enable. And it, um, it turns on the combat toggle key map, which is right here which does some stuff. I'll show that. It also turns on the menus. This is, uh, this is a turn on the menus that are to the right of the unit frames. And it does another set of green digits. So while it doesn't look like the digits up here change, they actually do. They actually do change, but they're still green. So, And this right here is just an intricate... Um, I don't know if it's very intricate, but it's... Uh, it takes... Well, here, when I click it, it disables, it makes a slot, a specific slot, leave uh, the combat action target group that I have set up so that they no longer receive anything that combat is receiving, if that makes sense. If that makes sense, it pops up the text that says, so-and-so has been removed from combat, and it changes the menu from um, the green circle to the red X. So that's all that that does. And I said they were hard coded. I know that I am using uh, as I'm, I am using slots here. So in a general sense, it, it is still flexible, but in a visual sense, um, if the party order changes, this button is obviously hard coded to angelic. So if the party order changes and angelic gets removed from the party or she's no longer at the top of the party, this button is obviously going to not work. What I, I guess what I could do is just make these, um, I could make these buttons, I could label these buttons a little different, I guess, and it would be a little bit more flexible, but um, at least visually flexible. But uh, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. This is gonna be the last, like I said, this is gonna be the last setup video that you're going to see before the end of the Wrath portion of this series, so. Looking forward to doing those three. Those are a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. See you guys.